Welcome to this talk for the uh, World Plan Day of 2022. Uh, I'm Victor Fernando de Alba and I'm going to talk to you about Plone 6 Volto Seamless Mode or how to deploy your Plone 6 uh, in Seamless Mode. Let's start it. First of all, what is Seamless Mode? Why it came to be? So we had some problems over the years, uh, the last years, uh, when uh, it comes for Volto and Plum 6 deployments, which is uh, that we started to deploy uh, the backend in, for example, in Slash API, uh, also as a sensible default. And then uh, we found out that all responses had the Slash API on them. I mean, all the JSON responses. Uh, and the front-end routing and the back-end responses were not the same. That's also a problem that you have to adjust always in the code for that response, right? You have to remove, uh, for example, on an image, you have to remove the slash API part in order to route well to the correct uh, uh, position, of, I mean, in the, in the tree of, of the image. Then it came also that multiple deployments started to, ha to have, uh, uh, I mean, you, you had a server with a lot of deployments on it. Then recompiling was mandatory on any deployment on every parameter and change. Let's say that you wanted to change the port of one of the sites, you had to recompile Volto in order to uh, make this happen because Volto had this parameterization hard-coded in the build. Uh, this happened both for the port parameter and the result API path parameter. Uh, the result API path parameter is the one that tells Volto where your backend is. And that's also why it so, was so important to uh, standardize this to make deployments easier. So then uh, seamless mode, mode came to be, right? And, and seamless mode is not else than a collection of technologies and sensible defaults that allows you to have almost zero configuration on your deployments. That's provided to some uh, set sensible defaults, right? And provided some uh, conditions that you should uh, adhere to. Uh, for example, we, we want always to have the front end and the back end API under the same host name. That's for a number of reasons. And we recommend you to make that happen. And you can do that in the front end web server in the Nginx or in Apache level, right? So you have uh, Bolto, uh, listening six.demo.plone.org and then you have your API in six.demo.plone.org slash plus plus API plus plus. This is one of the sensible defaults that I'm going to talk to you today and to be aware of that this is uh, available uh, since uh, Plone REST 2.0.0 Alpha 1. So uh, if you are using this package in your build, in your backend build, you uh, can access all your objects in your site uh, through this unified traversal that it's listening in plus plus API plus plus. So this is needed as a sensible default because we want to have something, uh, I mean, the backend available to uh, answer these Bolto requests that are going to happen. And we want this to be kind of uh, unified, universal for everybody, right? And we needed this. And the plus plus API plus plus is a traversal that has the ability to answer the request without uh, plus plus API plus plus on it, which is the same that if you remove the slash API in our previous way to deploy Plone. As you can see here, uh, all the responses uh, have stripped out the plus plus API plus plus. And that's also where the seamless mode uh, makes the relevance here because already the responses are, are seamless regarding the uh, request uh, server that has made it. Right. 
The second thing important is that uh, these uh, parameters that were hard coded into the build stop to do so. Right. So we have the Razzle API path and the port API, uh, the port parameter. Then we have to solve the problem of the runtime variables that were hard coded into the build, the, which are the port and the Razzle API path. We did that, so the environment variables are no longer bound to the build, but to the runtime. So you can really configure them on runtime. So you can uh, launch your uh, processes, even with, with the uh, system uh, process administrator that you are using, even if it's PM2 or supervisor or system five, uh, in it, uh, just pass an environment variable when you start your server and then it will work. So that happens for the, as I said, for the port and for the Razzle API path. Then another thing is to be able to configure the Razzle API path from the request host header that the Nginx is, is pushing for, right? So that that leads to uh, the zero configuration that I was talking before. So if uh, the the fact is that Bolto relies on the host header that is coming from the web server to configure the Resol API path, if no Resol API path is set, so you can safely not configure any Resol API path, nor in build out in build time, nor in runtime, and then Volto will rely on this host uh, header that comes from the web server, and then it will configure the Resol API path with that host. So if we go here, that will be effectively, you have to do nothing to, uh, if you have configured your uh, Nginx uh, listening in six.demo.plon.org, and you have the unified traversal in place because that is going to happen automatically. Let's, let's take a look at this uh, Nginx configuration file. So this is an Nginx configuration file. The upstream uh, backend and front end are set uh, for working on a Docker container, which is what I want to show you in the hands-on that will follow. Uh, so this is why it's pointing to host Docker internal, which is point points to the host of this uh, Docker container, and then we will have the usual um, the usual uh, configuration for our nginx servers. But this is uh, where it comes uh, the seamless mode to be. So in your nginx, you have to configure the plus plus API plus plus and it will point as it will point to any other of your plone sites, but taking into account that you are going to pass the plus plus API again in here, and you're going to strip out the original from the request. And afterwards, you're going to call Bolto as, uh, as usual as well, uh, with the cache on the uh, usual cache on, on the static resources, but then the proxy set header is going to ha is has to be set uh, in order for the host header to forward to the Volto server, right? This is also a common um, configuration that you pass the host header uh, down to the uh, reverse proxy, right? I mean, so so the application knows the host that that you are in, right? <clears throat> And that's it. Uh, this this will be the default configuration. And then Volto will uh, detect the host from here. No uh, runtime Razzle API path will be needed then. And you can adjust the port using a runtime variable. Okay. And this is seamless mode, right? Um, these are the versions which uh, seamless mode uh, are able to work uh, from plone rest above uh, 2.0.0 alpha one and plone rest api above 8.12.1 and let's let's take a look now i'm going to do a quick demo about these things so you you can see that it's they are not uh uh 
from yeah, rocket science, right? So let me uh, show you here is a, a Bolto uh, pool from uh, the main Bolto repository. I mean, yeah, yeah we can uh, start uh, Bolto from here. We, um, go we are going to launch um, the, uh, uh, the backend as well, but in a Docker container. So we're going to uh, duplicate this and we're going to go make start uh, backend Docker. And it's going to launch, what? sorry, sorry. Uh, I'm going to launch Docker image equals blown, blown uh, backend. 6.0.0 alpha 4. So we're going to do that with the latest uh, alpha from Plum 6 already. So we can see that it works in there also. Okay. We have a Volto launch here. We have the Docker container that it started. Let's see it in action. Uh, so we're going to go to localhost 3000 and we can see that we have a cloning here. Great. And we can also see and assess that we have a uh, clone six in here. Classic. Okay. We have the backend, we have the front end, and then we are going now to launch uh, Docker uh, Nginx container. And let me see, it will be here. So this Docker Nginx will have the configuration that I just show you in here. Let's see, okay. Yeah, in this configuration, uh, we're going to point to local.plone.org, uh, which is, uh, I modify my uh, host uh, entry uh, to allow that my, uh, my machine has a response to this name. Then this is the uh, configuration that I showed you. Remember that we have the host here and the redirect to the plus plus API. Let's uh, take a look now uh, at the API plus plus API plus plus thing. So let's uh, assess that it's work that it's uh, responding here. So we can see that our plone site has responded. Uh, with the JSON corresponding to the plone site. And we could uh, get the same from any object of the site, of course. Okay. Uh, now let's start uh, Nginx with that configuration. Is uh, run on seamless. Here we go. And now we'll see that if we access local.plone.org, we have uh, the site in here completely configured. And if we go to the network, we will see the uh, calls are being returned for the Plone site. For example, uh, the blocks, the blocks layout, the title, the ID, everything. And what I said before, all the uh, URLs that are returning doesn't have the plus plus API plus plus on it. So again, it's seamless. So the object that has been returned, it's exactly the one that I called for it. Let's uh, take a look now at the uh, at the Razo. I mean, and at the param parameterization, right? Uh, I, I run this in development mode, but now I'm going to build it. Yarn build. I'm going to build Bolto, and after I do this build, I will be able. I will show you how to parameterize with runtime variables Bolto, and you will see. Does these variables uh, work even with a compiled uh, Volta version? So ideally, we could uh, build Volta in our CI server, for example, and then deploy it everywhere in the client machines, in in development machines, in the servers, 
in server, in different server deployments, uh, I, I can imagine now if you have a staging on production servers that have different uh, server uh, server names, they will work with one build. So one build will roll roll them map. Uh, roll them up, roll them up uh, effectively, right? So let's see this. So first thing that I'm going to do is to change the port. So let's see that I want to, in, instead of the port uh, 3000, I'm going to listen to the port uh, 4000 and I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to start prod and I have Bolto here. Let's take a look now. Uh, I should have no Volto in here, but if I go to the 4000, I have Volto in here. Nice. And I'm going to touch uh, slightly the Nginx configuration. Instead of pointing to the port 3000, I'm going to point it to the port 4000. And I'm going to restart the Docker container for Nginx to uh, make it happen and make it work. Let's reload local.plondo.org and that's it. It's running again, uh, although I changed the uh, port in Nginx. Cool, then uh, next thing, next thing is, uh, I want to show you now uh, how the Razzle API path works. So this is the thing, I, I will stop this, I will uh, not do anything. So I'm starting the same build that I just did a moment ago, and I'm going to go to the Docker Nginx, I will stop it and we'll call uh, this small thing and I'm going to change the name of the server. I'm going to call it uh, local.kitconcept.io. Oh, typo. Yep. And I'm going to change here also the redirect to make it work fine. So I'm now changing. Well, instead of changing, I'm going to add it, right? I'm because just because I'm going to add this here, but I'm going to change this here, okay? localkitconcept.io, and I'm going to run again uh the server so we'll run again and i will run again bolto take a look that i haven't changed anything i'm using the same build that i did before and i'm going to go to local.kitconcept.io and voila the site is here i haven't changed a thing and because of the header of the um of the response is set to the uh, the host is set to the concept of local .io. Bolto has grabbed it and has configured the uh, Razzle API path on the fly, and now it's using it for how to configure itself from the Nginx configuration. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think that that's it. Uh, I hope you liked this video, and I hope you liked uh this uh presentation uh don't forget to look into the other problem day videos and thanks a lot for uh watching see you soon